like my planetary cores like I like my cat pictures on the internet. Fuzzy. Hey guys, welcome back to The Stemulus. I'm Steph Evans, and here's what happened this week in STEM. This week, we're talking about Jupiter. Aside from being the biggest kid on the block that's just a little gassy, what's new with the fifth planet from the sun? Well, according to NASA's Juno mission, quite a bit. Launched on August 5th, 2011, Juno, the spacecraft designed to help us study and better understand Jupiter and how it formed, traveled the roughly 588 million kilometers to Jupiter and inserted itself into Jupiter's orbit on July 4th, 2016. Since then, Juno completed its first data gathering pass in late August of last year, dipping as low as 2,600 miles above Jupiter's cloud tops, and it yielded a lot of data, some of which is redefining how scientists see Jupiter. Some of the most significant and surprising findings are coming from images collected by JunoCam, the spacecraft's imager. It snapped photos of Jupiter's poles, and what scientists found were massive storms swirling closely together and rubbing up against each other. When I say big, I mean huge. These storms are roughly the size of Earth. According to Scott Bolton, Juno's principal investigator, scientists are puzzled as to how the storms could be formed, how stable the configuration is, and why Jupiter's North Pole doesn't look anything like Jupiter's South Pole. The scientists are also curious to find out if these storms are always circulating around each other, or do they change and Juno just happen to capture them at this stage of the game. Over the next year, the team is going to have several more opportunities to study these mysterious storms and learn more about them. Jupiter's superstorms weren't the only surprise for the scientists. Juno's Microwave Radiometer, or MWR instrument, which samples thermal microwave radiation in Jupiter's atmosphere, revealed that Jupiter's belts and zones that we see in the pictures of the planet are pretty strange. For example, the belt nearest Jupiter's equator appears to reach all the way down into the atmosphere, and the belts at other latitudes have their own unique structures. The MWR samples at all different altitudes, reaching from the top of the planet's ammonia clouds down deep into the atmosphere. The MWR found that the ammonia levels actually fluctuate a lot, increasing as you travel deeper in as far as the MWR is capable of seeing, which is a couple hundred miles or so. But wait, there's more. Juno is also carrying a magnetometer investigator, or MAG, on board to take measurements of the planet's magnetosphere. While we've always suspected that Jupiter has the most intense magnetic field of any planet in the solar system, what Juno found was that Jupiter's magnetic field is significantly stronger than what we'd expected, winding up to be about 10 times stronger than the strongest magnetic field around Earth. In fact, the magnetic field is so strong that it would fry electronics, which is why Juno makes its passes by entering and exiting at the weak spots in the magnetic field near the poles. The MAG is also giving scientists a better idea about what forms Jupiter's magnetic field. The magnetic field has an uneven distribution, which makes it kind of lumpy. This lumpiness might mean that the field is generated by dynamo action, or the motion of electrically conducting fluids that maintain a magnetic field that happens closer to the surface, just above the layer of metallic hydrogen. Juno will also be checking out Jupiter's auroras found at its poles. The auroras are caused by particles that pick up energy and then smack into molecules in the atmosphere. It would seem that this process works differently on Jupiter than it does on Earth, providing scientists with yet another mystery to solve. The final and perhaps weirdest finding on Juno's initial path has to do with Jupiter's core. Originally, scientists suspected that Jupiter either had a compact core kind of like Earth or that it had no core at all. However, the data collected by Juno is contradicting both of these long-held theories. Apparently, Jupiter's core is of the more fuzzy variety, and much larger than we thought. The core could even be partially dissolved, and scientists plan on learning more about it and the rest of the planet in the following year. So what's next for Juno? At the moment, it's hanging out in a polar orbit around Jupiter. Every 53 days or so, its trajectory takes it closer to the planet for a two-hour pass between the poles that allows it to collect data and snap new pictures with JunoCam. The next flyby will take place on July 11th, and it will take Juno over Jupiter's most well-known feature, the Great Red Spot. So that brings us to our question of the day. What are some of your favorite Jupiter facts? Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, if you want to check out this story a little bit more in depth, I will include links to my sources down below along with links to all of my social media. So feel free to check that out in your free time. If you like this video and you want to see more STEM related awesomeness, please feel free to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
As always, if you see any really cool STEM related news stories throughout the week, please feel free to send them to me on Twitter at, at the stimulus using the hashtag twist them and they just might make it into a video. But as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time.